Hello. So I was already introduced that uh, my name is Siret Talve, but I have also a co-author for this presentation. So please, Juha uh, from Finnish Environment Institute. And uh, during the lunch break, if you have questions, especially about uh, fish and uh, all life cycle assessment related issues, you can address them and have a nice conversation with Juha, who is a very nice person too. <laughs> so basically, this uh, play tool that was introduced by, by Velio and Thomas is not only one that was uh, produced in this project. There is two tools more, and uh, one is about ketchup and the other is about fish. So I would like to introduce the background of these uh, tools, but uh, as you, it was already told, you can all try these tools in the lunch break in the computers that are in the lobby. So maybe it is uh, slightly too late because Virpi had already very long uh, and interesting presentation about life cycle assessment. So, but still, I decided to start my presentation with a, a general slide to, to say what is the life cycle. So basically, it is the whole process, whole row, uh, flow of processes that are in a product chain. So maybe it is easier to understand this if we look at the um, uh, picture. And basically here it is uh, presented how it would be in case of food. So the main stages of the life cycle of food are agriculture, followed by food processing, packaging, transport, retail, consumption, and the waste management. So, and here it is, uh, you can see the waste could be connected to this uh, first stage again with the agriculture. But uh, important is that not only these projects, we processes should be considered in the uh, study of uh, environmental impact of food, but also these uh, background processes and products should be taken into account. So that is the energy generation and uh, fuels, uh, chemicals, production, materials, and uh, other inputs. So you should uh, study the whole uh, chain to understand what is the real impact of, of the food. This um, life cycle thinking is um, very uh, deeply uh, used and basically all this uh, new environmental legislation of uh, the European Commission is uh, kind of based on, on this approach. And um, probably you have met this kind of uh, uh, approaches like green procurement and carbon footprint. But also this um, eco-labeling is very important uh, application of life cycle thinking. Because uh, in Estonia at least we have a very big variety of uh, different food labels. But I would say that this uh, reliability of the labels is very uh, different. And uh, the labels that are based on this uh, life cycle approach are considered to be the most reliable labels. Uh, in Estonia, we have uh, these uh, reliable labels uh, that are mainly on these uh, Finnish products, this Nordic uh, swan and also this uh, EU flower. So what, what do we, why do we need this life cycle thinking? Why it is it so important? Um, it is, uh, the main aim is to really avoid this burden shifting. Uh, 
that you do improvements in one, pro uh, in one stage of your product's life cycle, and at the same time, you could uh, increase the burden in another stage. And uh, this uh, life cycle view and uh, approach ensures that your product will become really better with your improvements. So here you can see this uh, example that uh, if you save in the, the energy during this uh, uh, use phase of a product, then you should also look that you don't increase it uh, amount of material you have needed to ensure this uh, decrease of energy saving, energy use. <coughs> So that is very, very important. And uh, some eco labels, for example, are telling about, uh, for example, you have all seen probably that there is on some products this uh, recyclable. But uh, this describes only one aspect of uh, the product. And maybe it is not uh, so environmental friendly in, in all aspects, if we look in this life cycle perspective. So what are the expected benefits from applying this uh, life cycle approach? So basically, we can uh, uh, improve the product in, in uh, different levels. And uh, the first is that within the project, we, within the product uh, chain itself, we can basically improve, find these uh, hotspots where the problems are the most, uh, uh, the biggest, and then making improvements into these stages. Uh, and uh, at the same time, also reduce the use of resources and uh, the impact, impact. And also it is useful to compa compare different products that are designed for the same purpose. For example, you can uh, calculate how many times you should use this um, uh, plastic, we, this uh, um, plastic uh, cups to get it uh, uh, no, this, uh, how many times you should use this cap to get it uh, better in means of environment if compared to the one, one time cap from plastic. So you can compare products that are for the same, same purpose or you can calculate whether it is more environmental friendly to use matches or, or, or um, uh, some other uh, equipment to switch in your gas or this kind of comparisons. If we come back now to this food chain, then we can see that uh, uh, there are, could be put forward recommendations for different players in the food chain. So let's start with farmers. Basically, what farmers could do is this energy saving and use of renewable fuels. At one of uh, the hotspots that has been identified is the drying of uh, grain. So there is uh, the point where you could focus. Then, of course, this uh, efficient uh, use of fertilizers and pesticides. And uh, here are also different um, approaches. And uh, the main is that, of course, use only if it is needed and uh, try to use also organic wastes for for fertilizing. 
And also, you could consider that uh, there might be alter alternative use of the low productivity fields, that uh, you shouldn't try to have crops on the fields that are really very, very, uh, that have low productivity. So in our project, uh, we looked at the study that was um, about tomato. And um, basically, it was this first stage of ketchup production. But for our big surprise, it came out that the ketchup that is sold in Estonia doesn't have at, uh, anything, basically, that is produced in Estonia. And uh, as a rule, the tomatoes are all from uh, southern regions. And uh, here is uh, this example about Mediterranean region tomato uh, cultivation. And uh, we introduced into our tool this comparison between open field and greenhouse cultivation of tomatoes. And the uh, life cycle approach is very good for comparing, comparing uh, different product types. So, and in this Mediterranean region, basically they use greenhouses for totally different purpose than we, we do here. Uh, they are usually very simple greenhouses without heating and uh, very low possibility for temperature regulations. You can basically open the windows to, to regulate the temperature. And uh, here are presented these positive sides or, of greenhouse use. Basically, the uh, production effectiveness is uh, much higher. And also, this uh, quality of product or tomatoes is is uh, best, better. And uh, there is a major reduction in use of pesticides and uh, irrigation, irrigation water, because uh, this evaporation is much less in, in greenhouse. Uh, this negative side, or what is more needed if you compare to open field, is of course this materials for uh, greenhouse infrastructure, and also there is a slightly higher energy consumption over this whole whole project pr uh, process. So, basically, uh, life cycle assessment gives your possibility to to compare different uh, ways of uh, of doing things and gives your answer what is reasonable. But of course, this is for certain conditions and certain region. In, in Estonia, if we would do it, I think the result would be very different if we want, for example, compare Estonian greenhouse with uh, uh, Mediterranean greenhouse tomatoes. So what about proce uh, food processing industry? So basically, uh, for I see that uh, for this food processing industry, it is, uh, they are the focal point of communication along this food chain. Basically, uh, they have their own industry and uh, they have very good access and the possibilities to, to ask their uh, providers, raw material providers, uh, farmers, how they they produce and uh, their uh, raw material for this food processing in industry, and uh, the other questions they could ask is also how this uh, uh, raw material, their products is uh, transported to the to the industry, and also of course uh, this energy generation, with this opening of energy market, now uh, enterprises can much more influence on the uh, envir environmental performance of the energy they use. Uh, 
because for some industries it might be even more important or bigger impact of to the pro product comes from the uh, stages or, or industries outside of the uh, focal or this food processing industry than from the industry itself. This packaging materials and, and everything should be considered. And uh, the basic would be that uh, these food processing industries will start to ask their suppliers about uh, environmental uh, information of their uh, ingredients and, and raw material. And at the same time, this uh, food processing industry could also uh, inform consumers. And uh, basically, they could look uh, how their products are marketed and consumed. And also, this waste handling is, is relevant, and how they pack their uh, product and and how much waste will be generated in this consumption phase. Um, the next uh, players are this retailer. Retailers. And um, these are basically the shops. And uh, for them, of course, are very important is day-to-day -day operations, this uh, freezing and uh, fridges they use and, and uh, general way of uh, heating of the shops and, and also this uh, electricity supply. But some retailer speaker ones have also this uh, uh, logistics systems separate and uh, here, they have also a lot of consideration that how these logistics centers are, uh, the warehouses, where they are placed in the, in the region and, and uh, to optimize these uh, uh, transportation routes. And uh, of course, the retailers are also uh, have direct uh, communication with uh, consumers. Um, currently, I am not sure that uh, very many uh, consumers in, in shops uh, ask about the environmental performance of the, of the food products, for example, that are sold in, in shops. But uh, with this uh, development of, uh, of uh, general knowledge about uh, and concern about environment, uh, there might be such situation, and uh, here these shops could be really key players in uh, obtaining and sharing the information. That has happened in, in England, where some shop chains have really taken a big uh, step and, and uh, collect this information and so that it will be ready for consumers and available. And one more point is uh, this uh, presentation of eco-labeled products. The shops could uh, have big influence how they uh, explain to consumers and, uh, and uh, uh, try to present the uh, environmental friendly products so that consumers notice them and uh, have a possibility to, to choose and do their shopping decisions based on the environmental per performance of products. So that is also, that could be helpful and reduce the environmental burden. And last, um, but not least, I was even surprised how much really, in case of food, can do consumers. There are different um, issues. We have already heard today about these eating habits, how you uh, compile your food plate. 
but also important are shopping habits, waste management, the home appliances, and also this wasting of food. So I would like to concentrate in some of these points, but um, first I think that uh, if you eat, very important is also the company with, with whom you eat. So, and uh, my presentation is last before the lunch break. So I give you two minutes and please turn to your neighbor on your left hand. And uh, if you don't know him or her, please introduce yourself and, and then please have a short conversation about fridge. I think that everybody of you has at home fridge. And uh, please ask whether your neighbor knows what is the energy class of your fridge. So I give you two minutes to speak about the energy class of fridge you have at home. Please. <laughs> Thank you. I think that uh, let's let's continue, please. I hope that you will everybody now have a, a good friend to to continue the discussion over the lunch. But uh, now I I would like that you uh, uh, you. You, you use the information you got from your neighbor. And uh, please uh, raise your hands, uh, these people who got from the neighbor the information that the, that the neighbor knows what is the energy class and what kind of, uh, from which energy class fridge they have at home. So, about neighbor. <laughs> yeah. I would say that it's about one third of the, of the people know. And uh, uh, I never realized that it might be so, so important because if you look at this slide, when we were searching for, for information about the energy consumption of fridges, then we, we found a, a life cycle assessment uh, about ketchup uh, and uh, it was published in 1998, and the figure for energy use used in this year was about four times higher than the, the fridges that are produced nowadays. So there is big difference, and I really recommend to have a have a look uh, on this. Um, energy consumption of uh, home appliances when you buy them because uh, at least in Estonia, I don't know about Finland or Latvia, but in Estonia basically uh, this SOP assistance 
this I can't really advise in that very much and don't, don't pay attention on this still enough, I think. But it is an important issue. Then, a uh, very important issue is also this wasting of food. So basically, if you waste half of your wood, food, the environmental burden of the, the eaten food is also doubled. So please don't waste food. And uh, shopping behavior, also this, uh, whether you go by car or not, and, and if you go by car, then buy more. And then about these um, examples, these tools, electronic tools, we have produced within this project. So first is about this uh, wild fish, and uh, uh, full LCA was uh, carried out by Finnish Environment Institute, and, and uh, based on that uh, data, they collected a simplified model was uh, created uh, for, for calculations in the project web page. And basically what was co considered, what kind of processes were con considered in this tool? Uh, what is important when you calculate environmental impact? It is this uh, traveling to fishing and then fish fishing itself, whether you use this motorboat or you do it from shore. Then this waste uh, management of fish, uh, how much is uh, wasted, whether you use this fillet only or, or you make uh, some soup of this uh, uh, bones and, and head. And then also this traveling pack and uh, also this how long you keep uh, uh, fish in, in your fridge at home. Yeah, and uh, there is also a difference whether you, you cook it or, or you just salt it. So this, all processes are considered and uh, you can create your own uh, fishing trip on the project uh, web page and calculate the environmental burden. Uh, the second uh, tool is about the life cycle of ketchup and uh, basically it is the approach is the same that different uh, life cycle stages are brought out and uh, there is also for some stages possible to make selection. For example, whether your tomatoes are grown on open field or, or greenhouse and uh, see how this uh, choice uh, reflects, is reflected in the environmental impact. Um, also, there are very interesting uh, uh, possibilities to compare different transport options. Basically, these transport options, some are really realistic that are really happening, but some included also this um, unrealistic, like transport of uh, tomato paste to ketchup factory by plane. And that is exactly for this reason to, to show how this uh, decision ref is reflected in this environmental burden of your product. So you can play and, and check it out. Um, and maybe it is good to, to show also it. In our web page. So that is the starting page. And here are these 11 life cycle stages. It is in Estonian only now. And uh, here is a, are the different options between uh, which you can choose. And uh, on the right side, here are these selected 
environmental indicators of the of the life cycle stage. So, uh, depending on your uh, selection, you can immediately see uh, this uh, impact on environment. And if you go through all the stages one by the other, you at the end get a table how uh, much is uh, the value of the indicators with your selected way of doing ketchup. Hmm? Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> But, but currently, customers don't have a choice for ketchup to, to see how it's, it's made in the shop. Now, basically, we found out that uh, they are all quite the same way, that tomatoes are produced in the southern regions and, and also the ketchup production is not in Estonia as a rule, but in the Baltic Sea region in general. We have time for one or two quick questions. If anyone has questions about life cycle analysis, Ketchup and fish. It looks like, oh yeah, one here. You didn't mention the share of the fridge of the ketchup life cycle. So how much of the carbon footprint of ketchup is coming from the fridge? Uh, it depends how, how long you keep your ketchup in the in the, in the fridge, there were two options. Uh, you can select between two, two options. One was one month and the other was one year. And uh, that is based on this uh, Swedish study that uh, usually people consume the ketchup bottle within one month, but there are, so, there are some people who are keeping it for one year. And uh, then uh, if you keep it so long, the environmental impact is also already comparable to the impact related to ketchup production, for example. So it is, it is really, really huge. And uh, basically, that is something you can do about. And also, if you threw away half of the ketchup, uh, how much you waste ketchup. Uh, there was also the Swedish stu study that uh, the people waste ketchup uh, from 0.5% up to 26%. So this is also something that the uh, consumer really influences. OK. Any more questions? Thank you, Siret.